And so, you know, in terms of like risk of getting cancer, cervical cancer for women in the U.S., because it can be, um, you know, mostly prevented through uh, through um, the pap smear protocol that we have. Right. It's very, 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 very minuscule. And in fact, cervical cancer is is not even in the top 10 for cancer for women. And the, the, the biggest kicker of the HPV vaccine is that um, 75 percent of cases of cervical cancer are in women over 55. But the vaccine only lasts eight to 10 years. So think of how much money they're going to make off boosters. Right. But why are we mandating this for teenagers when that vaccine is not going to give them coverage for the real risk category, which is not even a real risk because it's so small, the risk of getting right. cervical cancer? But we're giving this vaccine to teenagers and it only lasts until may maybe they're 30, you know, being generous. Right. And yet they're not going to be at risk for it until they're over 55, really. So yeah. why are we giving this to teenagers? We're seeing an amazing amount of injuries and deaths and the risks are not worth the benefits. Wow. And in fact, the, one of the lead researchers, Diane, Dr. Diane Harper, who was an independent consultant for Merck on the research, the Gardasil trials, has speaking, is speaking out against these HPV va vaccine mandates because of this. The risk, the, the benefits are just not there. I mean, but right. the profit is. And in fact, the, one of the things I definitely want to um, touch on is that this is worth tens of billions of dollars for Merck. There are 76 million kids in the U.S. in the last census numbers between nine and 26 boys and girls. And this is worth um, tens of billions with an annual recurring revenue stream of 1.8 billion. This wow. is like blockbuster We've status. We've got to get this information out there. Blockbuster status. So I'm so glad that you are bringing this information out there. I know we're going to have more with you. Um, coming up after this, we're actually going to play some of those phone calls uh, with your questions that you called in for Brandy Vaughn. Please go to, is it councilforvaccinesafety.org? Oh, yes. And learn everything you can. I know you've got another event coming up as well. Get this information out there. This is key because right. this is coming for the entire country. Coming up, Darren McGreen talks about the latest showdown between global superpowers. I might as well just... an American president. Just add puppet, then vote and repeat every four years. Introducing Secret 12, the new InfoWars Life vitamin B12 formulation. Now, InfoWarsLife.com is excited to announce that we can bring you our most bioactive, powerful form of B12 that has been developed with our exclusive perfected process. Secret 12 is a binary of nutramedical grade, bioavailable coenzyme forms of B12. Secure your revolutionary Secret 12 formula right now at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. I'm running for president. Everyday Americans need a champion, and I want to be that champion. I'm hitting the road to earn your vote, and I hope you'll join me on this journey. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico, where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure the sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives 
gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee, and it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press, all the while enjoying a truly great-tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. Another major health threat, this one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. We're here at a supermarket in Toledo. You can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must have for every modern, independently minded household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today to purchase your ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system or call 1-88-253-3139. Over the past year or so, the Obama administration has claimed that its bombing campaign in Syria has been a success. However, it's no secret that ISIS has only gotten stronger, and they've somehow managed to take over and control lots of territory, about 35% of Syria. Well, that is until now, because the tide of the conflict in Syria seems to be turning fast. And that's because the Russians have stepped in, and they mean business. The infrastructure used to stage terror attacks in Syria and Iraq has been severely damaged. I mean, they are going in there with a large fleet of warplanes and helicopters, including armored Su-25 ground support fighter jets. They're dropping cluster bombs on terrorists and KAB-500 air bombs on these guys. And guess what? It's working. Intelligence reports show that the militants are in a total panic right now. Desertion has started in their ranks. I mean, it was just one Russian airstrike alone on Saturday that has over 600 militants abandoning their positions as they are trying to, well, they're running scared, all right, and they're trying to flee the country because the Russian Air Force is bombing the living daylights out of ISIS. The sound of the rocket was extremely frightening. Then a huge explosion happened in front of my eyes. I've never seen anything like it before in Talbisa. The scale was far worse than anything the Syrians have done. The destruction was huge and horrible. Buildings were destroyed completely and streets just disappeared under clouds of dust and rubble as the walls fell. So the question is, where the hell has the U.S. military been all this time? I mean, these Russian airstrikes have produced significant results in just a short amount of time that greatly surpass any effort achieved by the U.S.-led anti-ISIS coalition in over a year. It's an embarrassment, especially to the Obama administration, or at least it should be, because this whole incident has made Obama look rather pathetic. Well, what else is new? But I tell you what, more and more people are finally beginning to wake up and understand what is truly going on in Syria and what the real objective has been all along for the U.S. government and the military industrial complex. And that is that the Obama administration, well, I'll let you in on a little secret. They've never been interested in removing ISIS at all. In fact, it is the total opposite. ISIS is a Frankenstein created by Western intelligence to destabilize Syria in an effort to remove President Bashir al-Assad from power. And that's because the global banking cartels, well, they can't wait to get their greedy little paws on Syria's natural resources, specifically natural gas and its transit through the Middle East. They also want to control another 
very vitally important piece on the grand chessboard. And in the process, our government has armed, funded, and trained ISIS terrorists to, well, basically to do Washington's dirty work. I am concerned about this report about Syrian rebels and the ceasefire with ISIS. Uh, Senator but Paul, that's not true. Well, it's not true. Uh, it's you want not me to read true. From the, uh, Whether I don't care about the report. I know these people intimately. We talk to them all the time. Putinova says people living in ISIS-controlled areas are in fear of the harsh penalties for infringement of the stringent laws. The Islamic State terror group has reportedly executed a hundred of its own foreign fighters who tried to flee their headquarters in the Syrian city of Raqqa. We're here in the 17th Division military base just outside the city of Raqqa. And we're here with the soldiers of Bashar. You can see them now digging their own graves in the very place where they were stationed. Can ISIS be defeated in this battle here? That's the big question mark. And if ISIS can't be defeated, having taken this fight now to back to ISIS, and if the Iraqi military is unsuccessful, then I think you have to look at a very different map in the Middle East. So look, there's no doubt that the U.S. government is responsible for the creation of ISIS. In the Obama White House, they say that they are only arming the so-called moderate rebels in Syria. But we know better than that. I mean, we've seen a whole trail of evidence throughout the entire country, like U.S. weapons airdrops that somehow, magically, mysteriously, and accidentally keep ending up in the hands of ISIS, along with, the, well, a whole bunch of Toyota pickup trucks. And this clearly demonstrates U.S. involvement and support. And of course, we also have declassified secret U.S. government documents that were obtained by the law firm Judicial Watch that shows that the U.S. deliberately allied with al-Qaeda and other Islamist extremist groups to take out Bashir al-Assad. So the evidence is there. And Russia isn't stupid. Vladimir Putin, he knows what's going on. And he's only openly and publicly declared that Obama has indeed armed ISIS. In fact, InfoWars crew member and Russian translator Daria, who works with us here at InfoWars, well, she translated a speech by Vladimir Putin that was, this was a speech before the Russian airstrikes in Syria, where he states that the U.S. armed ISIS and the Syrians that are fighting against Assad. Once again, proving what we've been saying here at InfoWars all along. Another threat that President Obama mentioned was ISIS. Well, who on earth armed them? Who helped to arm the Syrians that were fighting against Assad? Who created the necessary political climate that facilitated the situation? Who pushed for the delivery of arms to the area? Do you really not understand as to who is fighting in Syria? And make no mistake about it, the fact that the Russians are now involved, well, that is a game changer. Because obviously the Obama administration and the global banking cartels, well, they're not very happy with the idea of Russian airstrikes in Syria. And this is where it starts to get very dangerous because this is how the war starts to escalate. British defense officials have instructed fighter jet pilots to shoot down Russian jets over Syria. And U.S. Senator John McCain says he'd like to arm the Syrian rebels with weapons to shoot down the Russian Air Force. We need to have a no-fly zone. We need to have a buffer zone for refugees. We need to provide No, I, I know that, Senator, help. but if they are attacking yeah. the very guys who we want to see topple aside, uh, you, you would let American that. planes just no. continue to pass them and let them do that? No, but I might do what we did in Afghanistan many years ago to give those guys the ability to shoot down those planes. That, uh, that equipment is available. Who would be shooting them down? The Free Syrian Army. Meanwhile, al-Nusra forces, who are infamously known for being the real culprits behind the chemical attacks on Syrian civilians a few years ago, well, they just launched rocket strikes on the Russian embassy in Damascus. Rockets that were, well, more than likely supplied by U.S. forces. This is a buildup to a global conflict. 
Meanwhile, Zero Hedge is reporting that the commander of Iran's Quds Force 